Hey, what's up guys? Ashby Dashby Farms. I know it's been a while. Uh, we have just been crazy busy, so busy that I've forgotten to make videos. Um, we were started harvesting honey about two months ago and it took us about two months with working a day job to get through it all. Um, and on top of that, we sent bees up to the mountains for sourwood. So I tried to include those videos to which uh, we hit a really good lick and we did really well with our sourwood honey flow this year. I was very impressed with um, the amount we made. Not all of our hives did super well, but um, we spent the last oh, two weeks or so getting the honey back and the honey off and extracted and then getting the bees off the trailers. Um, and, uh, and back out here is um, the 16 colonies we sent um, up near Marion. And so uh, these hives did particularly well. And currently, as you can see right here, they're uh, still singles um, set up. So show you what a bee truck looks like uh, for me today. It is August the 15th and I'm sorry, that's not right. It's August the 11th. And um, we were just getting around to, looks like I got a friend. Oh, hang on, there we go. So um, we're just getting around to putting mite treatments on. I have a particular reason why I waited. So I wanted the queen, so all right, let's back up. My fall nectar flow, um, goldenrod starts here around September the 5th to 10th so I know that I need an egg laid on August the 1st will be a forager on September the 15th but our goldenrod lasts until October the 15th or so so I waited till August you know mid-August right now to start putting mite treatments on so that the queen would not stop laying. It's okay to have a little two weeks later. This is very strategic and you really need to know your dates about um, when your fall nectar flow starts. See, for us, we feed sugar and we leave the bees, anything they make off of aster and goldenrod. Of course, I set up all my yards in proximity to where we see goldenrod the year before. So um, th that's, uh, it's free food, it's less feeding and that offsets our costs at a commercial scale significantly um so let me flip it around here i was surprised to see the bees have this much activity going on um a lot coming and going but those are all my 10 frame double deeps that never moved whereas my singles that we took to the mountains they hardly have anything going on but i know that these colonies are really packed So my goal today, I brought 60 boxes with me. They all have drawn comb. Basically we extracted the honey out of them and we don't want to let those um, drawn combs sit for too long or else they get wax moth. I had two boxes that are on the trailer currently that were chock full of wax moths earlier. So like the larva. So I just slammed them down real hard and got most of those out and we'll put them on a strong colony and um, the colony will take care of them. Um, so in the truck currently, these are all spacers and I keep all my scrap wood and the reason being um, we're using Apa Guard on our strong colonies and we're using Apa Var on the nukes. Um, Apa Guard tends to cause the queens to stop laying, particularly when it's hot. Today is a high of 90. So many of you may not know about Apa Guard. Um, it's a thymol based gel and it does a really, really, really good job at handling mites. However, it causes the queen to stop laying. So I waited until mid-August, um, you know, like I said, it's like the 11th or something. Um, days are running together, but uh, it's very strategic that I want my queens to stop laying now for a month. Um, I do three applications. Our goal is to get 100 grams of treatment on them. And so you can do four treatments of 25, you can do three treatments of 33. Um, I'm going to put basically a 10 frame double deep is going to get a 33 gram treatment 10 days apart and so over the course of a month. Uh, I'm not trying to blow them out of the colony like you can literally make, force your bees out of the colony with, with Apa Guard. They say that the standard dose is 50 grams that's when it's less than 80 degrees. And of course, our August in Piedmont, North Carolina are just humid and sweltering. And it, it, I, my goal is not to kill my bees right now, it's to handle the mites. So 
causes me a little bit more labor in having to go around and touch all 500 colonies. But um, so, so what we'll do is we'll use these spacers here on either side of the lid. Um, all these singles will go ahead and get a double, a double deep box um, and we'll treat them as if they're a double deep. Um, I mean, you might have some residual phoretic mites just throughout the, the deep box. I, I want my mites gone. So uh, that's our plan for today and I'll update you here in just a little bit. All right guys, so I'll take the scrap wood pieces give you an idea so this one here covers the two like this I pull up I do about 30 grams it's like a giant syringe just walk over spread the stuff out there you go Apo guard just comes in a bucket like this, just like a white gel, comes with a bunch of cards. It's pretty simple. So the other thing is I'm using Apovar strips in all my nukes. The reason that I'm switching it up this year is not what everybody thinks, which is Apovar is losing its efficacy. Amitraz is the active ingredient in Apovar, and it's been kind of the standard for going on 20 years now. Um, Amitraz is still effective as long as it's used right. It needs to be in the colonies. The bees need to bump into it um, for about 45 to 52 days. I usually leave mine in there like 56 days. Um, most of that punch is going to be impacted in the first 20 days. But thymol can be really harsh on a young, small nuke. And a lot of my nukes right now are like three and four frames. Um, there'll be a full five frames by the time we go into winter, but I don't want to really pack that punch to them. So given that they're fresh splits this year, they've never had a chance to come into contact with Amitraz. So the, a big part of mite treatments and not letting mites get used to um, certain chemicals or growing resistance to it is switching it up on them if you can imagine that. So like the last two years we used Apivar, um, then we'll use Apigard right now on our big colonies. And of course during winter time, we'll use oxalic acid. Um, the combination of either Apivar, like really if we look at August, you're just trying to knock the mite loads back down to an infestation rate of less than 1%, which is three mites per half a cup of bees or three mites per 300. That's a less than 1% infestation rate. Just trying to get the mites back under control in the colony so that the, the fall bees or the winter bees, the bees that are raised in the fall that will go into winter, won't have big chunks missing out of their fat bodies. Um, imagine if I took a pie plate bite out of you anywhere. The, if that doesn't kill you, the virus loads or the infection rate would. That's what really takes our colony numbers down. So when we're when we're thinking about breeding healthy fall bees for winter, we need the mite loads knocked down. That's why we treat in the beginning of August. So that all of August, sorry, my nose is itching. Uh, all of August, um, the, the the bees are are able to start rearing really healthy bees. That gets them through long winters, um, and really our our bees start really brooding up around Valentine's Day. So we've got a four month window. Mid-October to mid-February, we need the bees to get through. It's not like these long winters like they have up north. But either way, we come in after it's cold, we hit them with oxalic acid, and then we start spraying with no mites. Of course, we're trying to breed a, a better bee specific to Varroa sensitive hygienics. Also, those same bees, I want them to be high honey producers. Um, with our outfit, our seven best tested queens with the new unhealthy brood odor. If you like, you can watch my other video on that, but our UBO unhealthy brood odor, our seven best colonies in our whole outfit were also our seven most hygienic queens. I think there's a correlation there. So we're gonna target to breed specific to VSH. And in the meanwhile, we're gonna pick our best honey producers as well. I think we have a, a correlation there. Um, we'll see, only time will tell. Do a lot of scientific studies. I'll document it all on YouTube. But 
um, that our whole B year, the, the B calendar year starts in August. All of our preps for next year start in August. It's how we send our bees into winter in August. Um, and as a matter of fact, while we're talking about that, I like to send all my bees into winter in a 10 frame double deep. And this year I'm gonna be doing some double screen boards and putting my nukes above strong colonies so that come spring, my mainly Italian stock, we've got a touch of Carniolan, but I am in the bee business of selling spring nukes. With that goal, um, a 10 frame double deep is not only more forgiving, and by that I mean they don't swarm as fast come spring, but also they overwinter a larger cluster. That also means that they overwent, they, to go into winter, they need a lot more stores. So we feed a lot of sugar in the fall. We let them keep all their fall goldenrod honey. And then uh, in the spring, I'm able to usually pull at least two, maybe three splits off of each colony. And that's how we generate income for our, uh, an aspect of our business. That's one of our income streams. Um, we are really targeting and focusing um, quality queens not just run-of-the-mill queens. I'm trying to make really high quality, well-bred, great documented VSH stock so that if you buy from us, I can say, hey, here is the, in this case next year, like if you wanna buy our breeder queens, I'll say, here's a tested mother, here's the test results, here's the test results of this breeder queen. Um, if you wanna buy our undocumented Queens, then I'll say here's the results of the queen mother of this stock and then here is the res, uh, um, the queen mother that it came from basically and uh, we're gonna open breed that in our drone flooded area that's also full of VSH drones because of course as we know uh, drones are genetically identical to the queen mother so that's our plan for for spring we're gonna be not only selling bees and queens but we're focusing on great great stock it's not a jab out of folks it's not a jab at folks who are rb breeders in florida or georgia um i think there's too much negative connotation around that these days they are trying they're six weeks ahead of me i'm two weeks behind all my competition here in north carolina because i want my queens to lay for 21 days not 14 days i'm not trying to be first to market i'm trying to breed quality um, some folks, ah, I gotta have it as soon as they're available. That's not my target customer. Um, we are trying to go after, hey, here's quality bees that are going to last you multiple years and breed great stock and spread, spread great genetics, um, across, you know, mainly North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina, that kind of thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm not trying to produce 10,000 Queens from one breeder queen, we're trying to produce 2,000 queens from seven breeder queens. I like genetic diversity. That is a major, major key point to VSH stock. Um, so there's just a whole side ramble. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, anyways, talked a little bit about some quality stock, how we do our mite treatments, why we do our mite treatments. Now, what we're doing for our mite treatments, what the impacts of that are. Guys, if you would do me a personal favor, if you've enjoyed today's um, I don't know if you call it a lesson or video or just my thoughts, my rambles, whatever. Please subscribe down below, like, and please comment. That helps us with the YouTube algorithm get found and our, um, our channel gets spread to more beekeepers. So thank you for me to you. I'll see you on the next episode.